using their constitutional rights by participating in electing their leaders in the recently concluded 2020-2021 national presidential, parliamentary and local government elections. It is true the national resistance movement won elections overwhelmingly given the statistics that were released by the Electoral Commission, by the Independent Electoral Commission, but also the statistics that we compiled as NRM party. His Excellency Yoweli Kaguta Tibuhaburu Seven was declared the winner for the 2021 presidential elections. The National Resistance Movement got 336 elected members of parliament. Out of the 300, uh, 529 members of parliament, reflecting 68.5%, 61 members of parliament elected as independents, but already 56 have accepted to work with us as NRM, having participated majorly in the NRM primaries. The National Resistance Movement also boasts of having 91 members as leaders of the district local governments out of the 146. And during the elections, if you observe, 22 of the district chairpersons are independents who are also people who have accepted to work with us as NRM. Yes, they don't have options, but they've pledged to be loyal to NRM. The electoral cycle has come to an end. And we are now in the ant climax. We're at various levels of leadership. We are witnessing the elections of speakers and deputy speakers and the taking of oaths by elected leaders for the different, in the different districts and local governments and its town city councils. I take this opportunity as the Secretary General of NRM to appeal to Ugandans at large, but specifically to those leaders who participated in electoral processes, to now get down to hard work so as to lay a firm and strong foundation for the social economic transformation of the country during this term. I challenge those readers, irrespective of their political affiliations and persuasions, who Ugandans have entrusted with leadership positions at all levels in the country to develop mechanisms for conflict resolution, whether through mediation, reconciliation, or arbitration, ETC, in order to promote unity and cohesion in the country. Because it is only when a country is purposefully united that the implementation of government programs, i.e. the processes of eco social economic transformation, can be fast-tracked. I take this opportunity to congratulate Right Honorable Jacob Olanya Lokori and Right Honorable Anita Anit Amo for their respective elections as Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the 11th Parliament of Uganda. The election of these two leaders is a reflection of the unity and cohesion within the National Resistance Movement. I thank His Excellency Yori Kaguta, Tibu Haburwa, the National Chairman of NRM, the National Executive Committee, and the NRM Parliamentary Caucus for their role in ensuring that the election of the two NRM flag bearers for the position of Speaker and Deputy Speaker came to what the party had wanted to be. However, Secretary General, I take this opportunity from the onset to remind both the Right Honorable Speaker and the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker that they should never forget that positions to which they are now holding were deployments by the party to the different organ, the Parliament of Uganda. And they should hold these positions in trusteeship and on behalf of the party. It is the expectation of the NRM that they will provide necessary strategic leadership in parliament and they will support and work in close relation with the other branches of government to fast track the socio-economic transformation agenda for Uganda. 
I'm also aware that the elections, for especially the speaker, has been unprecedented. For the first time, we have had two senior members of the National Resistance Movement contesting for the position of speaker. What has been happening before? After the caucus has taken a decision, the office, those contesting for speaker, we have always had one and going through an opposed. As you are aware, we have been having only one candidate and who would go through and opposed in parliament. The election of the speaker tested the cohesion and unity within the party. And as you are all aware, the party emerged victorious. And Ugandans, for reason being, Ugandans decided to go multi-party. The NRM party had candidates, and the NRM party won. I call for calm within the NRM fraternity, the members to desist from making comments in the media that may be prejudicial to the unit and cohesion in the party and the country. I call on the NRM members to desist from confronting each other on the basis of the dynamics of the election, especially of the speaker. Fellow citizens, you are aware that the second phase of the COVID-19 pandemic is within us in Uganda. The medical experts have advised that this phase is more lethal and fatal in terms of casualties. We are advised that the ICUs of Mlago and most government and private medical facilities are already full and overflowing. I therefore appeal to Ugandans, especially the politicians involved in celebrating their victories to do so in a strict compliance to the standard operating procedures, SOPs, as guided by the scientists. So as not to put the people of Uganda at risk of contracting and spreading the COVID-19 pandemic. I finally thank the members of the fourth estate for the very good cordial relationship that you have shared during this period of election cycle and circle. I thank you for the professionalism you exhibited throughout this period. I also thank you for covering the NRM campaign and other party activities, both day and night. And in the same vein, I want to take this opportunity to apologize for all the shortcomings on our part as a party. I say all of this for God and my country.